questions up to this point? Yes, Kate? So what was Putin's like, main like, argument for the Asian Um So we're, we, we, we're not up to that yet. We're, as far as like, the, like his story about the origin of language, he's going to get to that. We're going to get to that in, in Chapter 12. But um, yeah, at this point, uh, you know, I'm just working out his argument about what language is, what human language is in distinction, in, in, in contrast to, to animal language. And second, his theory about the way uh, language does evolve, right? So he's got, he's kind of reversing the, the schema from Pinker where he's, you know, Pinker is saying, oh, the brain evolved to create language. Deacon is saying, well, language evolved to fit the human brain, in a sense, right? But he, we, we're, not, we're not to the, to, to the origin story yet, but we're getting there. But he's, he's kind of laying the groundwork for that by, uh, by indicating to us that there's, there's a story about um, language evolution itself in addition to brain evolution. Is he referring to like Bobbitt and how they are like twins, but they're twins? So yeah, so I'm saying yes, he's agreeing um, uh, with Warburton about metaphor. Uh, he's agreeing with Hatter about kind of the, the qualitative distinction between animal and human communication, and with Peirce about index and symbol but he disagrees with Pinker about this relationship between thought and language and about the, uh, the reasons that universal grammar exists, right? Okay? Uh, other questions? So how do variations in language lead to changes in the structure of language in future generations, according to Deacon? Anybody want to? Yes, um, Scott, right? Okay, yeah, so uh, basically he's saying that children are kind of the bottleneck in learning language, and so it has to be easy enough for children to learn for it to be passed on, right? And so um, if there are variations in language, it's those variations that are most conducive to child learning that will be passed on to the next generation. Good, all right. Uh, what is the measure of success for determining the survival of new language structures? I mean, sort of the same thing, not just basically the measure of success is, you know, how easy it is, is it for a child to learn? That's, you know, if, if it's easy for a child to learn, then it's, then it's, it'll be successful, right? As, 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 a, as, a, as, a, as a language structure. And what's the difference between Pinker's and Deacon's interpretations of the meaning of variations in language use? Anybody have this? Have an idea on this? Yes, Scott. Okay, so uh, yeah, Pinker talks about the language module, and Deacon talks about the evolution of language. Um, so specifically, when they're talking about variations in language, they, they you know they both talk about how each person speaks in a different in, in a slightly different way than other people, right? But Pinker emphasizes that everybody uses universal grammar and that the small differences, not only between the, the way individuals speak, but also between whole languages, how different languages are structured, that all of those details are sort of these, these surface phenomena that are not so important in comparison with the universal grammar, which is kind of at the core of language. And Deacon doesn't make that kind of a distinction. He's not saying that there's this core universal grammar and then there's these small variations that, that don't affect that core. He's really saying that all variations are important and that all variations can have a, a kind of constitutive effect, a, a sort of defining effect on how language is used in the future. And, and that's the process of language evolution, right? Okay, so they're, they're, they're both looking at variations in language use, but sort of seeing um, interpreting that those variations in different ways, right? Okay. Other questions? All right. So 